Hey guys, this is Tony with Thinner Geek Designs. Back to you with another tutorial video or a more of a what's new video. Today we're going to take a look at Adobe Dimensions to tell you what it is, when you should use it, should you be using it, and can your computer even run it. So let's start at what is Adobe Dimension. Adobe Dimension is basically Adobe's 3D rendering app. Um, they're kind of pushing it more as like a uh prototype or like a say i need a quick promotional thing i can just put it together quickly and render it out um it's a pretty cool app it's still in its early infancy though i think it's got a lot way to go i've been using keyshot a lot in the last couple years and i think keyshot's leagues ahead of dimension um but knowing adobe it could catch up or it could die off uh it's kind of a hybrid to meet in the middle between a high-end 3d rendering app and what designers need for what design purposes. Um, I see this being used good in advertising and uh, uh, product promotion. So say you wanna get a, a quick rendering of a bag or a can, something that you need shot, and you need a photographer to do it, it might be a good way for you to put it together real quick and say, hey, this is what I'm looking for, can you recreate it? Or they recreate it, you bring it in here and add the final touches and get it done. So, that's what it is. Can your computer run it? This is the question. A lot of lower end computers are not going to run it. Adobe Dimension won't even load in your computer if you don't have the proper hardware. Adobe will do a scan on your hardware to make sure you have it. Um, you're going to need a at least an i5 or better. And on top of that, you're going to need a GPU of some kind. Um, I would say an RX 550 or a GTX 1050 is your minimum for that. Uh, CPU, or, like I said, i5 or an R5, you're probably or a Ryzen 5, you're gonna need for a CPU. But now that we got out of the way, let's jump into it. Uh, we're gonna create a new document, and we're gonna kind of play around and see what we can make with this. So when you start it up, you're gonna see this grid area. This is basically your surface that you're gonna put your 3D object on it. And as you can see, there are already a bunch of presets that we can pick from. Um, you even have a laptop that you could use for your uh, promotional or your portfolio. So say you have a, a cool website and you want to show it off in actually a 3D sh uh, space. You can do that. Um, we're just going to grab this bag and put it over here. Now this bag is three-dimensional and fully 3D. We can move it around in full 3D. We can back away from it. We can rotate it in any way that we want. And as you can see right now, the point is stuck to there. So that's just going to keep it going there. But say we want to do something cool like it's kind of floating in the air. We can do that and then we can move it. We can lift it up above, and as you can see, we have shadows. So, now that we're in here, we are going to see that there are some coordinates, there's some properties. We can duplicate it, we can move to ground. We can place a decal. So say we want, you know, let's go find one of my client's work and we can add it as a decal or basically a two-dimensional now on a three-dimensional. Um, let's grab these guys. Actually, uh, we'll grab these guys right here. Now we're gonna probably, I just made a mistake. We're gonna have to get this as a PNG. But now, can, get this kind of centered right. We want it like that.
we were a little bit smaller. There we go. We got that now. Now let's say we double click into it. Now we can go in and actually change some of the more deeper priorities of the surface. So say we want it to be a less dark surface, we can change that. We can change the opacity of it. We can also change the color of it. But I just want to add a color. So there's actually a lot that you can do this roughness. There's this is a tool that's better if you play around with it. I think there's a lot of potential in here. Um, how much actual potential it has for it kind of depends on what you need. Um, so here we have materials. So say you want to change the bag color. Um, I don't know. For some reason, you need this bag to be a brushed metal. You can have that. Um, or if you need it for a wood grain. You can have that as well. Or a wicker. And then all of these properties also have different priorities on top of them. So now that we have, we're going to just make this this color for some reason. You know, just to show off. Well, actually, you know what? We'll make it a, uh, make a tile. No, not that. We'll make a bricks. Okay. We have our brick bag. Um, and we need a different lighting scenario. So here we have different lights. This is going to change the how light interacts with your object. This happens in all um, 3D softwares, depending on its key shot, uh, whatever it all works. Uh, Autodesk has one as well. They all have different lighting effects. So we want, you know, we're, we're going for a rustic look. We're going to go for Wood Studio. You can't really tell much that changed. Let's go for a more drastic one. Sunrise. As you can tell, as I'm adding these, actual the, the color is changing on it. And we can go in and actually change these settings more. Um, so it's, again, it's something you need to kind of play with and understand what does what, how to do it, how to make it work for your needs. We're going to go back to that one, and then we're going to add a image on it. So say if like this is like your your logo and you need it on there, let's add a backdrop. And now we can actually make this backdrop fit in this. Match sunrise. See, it's actually telling us instant alignment, light your scene using information. Okay. And then it actually used some of what Photoshop already has in it and matched the perspective right for it. So this bag is floating now in this scenario. Now we can go in and actually say, well, you know what, that, that um, wasn't actually what I wanted for that color. I actually wanted an orange bag. But I could play around with this forever. This is such a fun tool. But I think this tool has its shortcoming as is now. Um, Keyshot is really advanced for what it is. Yes, it costs $2,000 for it, but what you get is an amazing tool. Uh, all the 3D softwares have their own built-in rendering tools. Now they can't do all this with this ease, but they have it built in, and the people that are doing these 3D models and 3D renderings, they're going to have that already built in. So they're not going to get that market. They're trying to get the designers. But here's where the shortcomings come. You have to build these models to get them. So Adobe needs to figure out that bridge. How to get the models or build the models and get them imported in here. I know Keyshot has, or not Keyshot. Creative Cloud has some Adobe app or 3D apps already, but they're not communicating as well as they could. But this is just... What is Adobe Dimension? Should you use it? Is it a tool for you? That's the question you have to answer yourself. If you have Creative Cloud and you have the hardware to try it, try it out. See if it's good for you. See if it works for you. If not, just wait for October for uh, Adobe Max to see if they do any changes to it to make it better. Well, guys, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something good. 
I'll see you guys next one. Bye.